The planet Earth. Estimated population 6.77 billion. The human animal is a very interesting being. People are capable of so much individuality, yet most feel the need to fit in with established social conventions, rather than choosing to break the mould and really stand out from the pack. Many people in the world can be classified as neurotypicals, or NTs for short. This means that their personality and behaviour conform to what most people consider to be normal. But who decides what is normal? And what about those who don't conform to this preconception? It has been estimated that one person out of every 150 is diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. Autism is a disability that affects the cognitive development of the brain, characterised by widespread abnormalities of social interaction and communication, as well as severely restricted interests and highly repetitive behaviour. People with ASD generally don't conform what is typically considered to be normal. The severest form of autism means that those afflicted are locked into a world of non-communication that totally aligns on others for the most basic of needs. Imagine the needs of a child with mental age as young as two years, with no cognitive or learning skill, and you get an idea what it's like to have the severest form of autism. The autism spectrum is vast. No two examples are the same. Asperger's syndrome is also known as high-functioning autism, and is now widely recognised as such. Asperger's syndrome shares many of the characteristics of full-blown autism, although it is a much milder condition, generally affecting those afflicted with it in a less severe manner. The main difficulties the condition poses come in the form of social interaction and communication skills, just as with autism, but people with Asperger's typically develop to a much greater degree than those with autism and generally don't suffer a delay in language or cognitive development. Asperger's is a condition that a person has for life, and without help in developing social and communication skills, anyone who has it will find life very challenging, even more so than someone with the severest form of autism, who may be insular and unaware of a condition and how it affects them. The diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome is more common in males than it is in females, with estimates indicating that for every 10 boys who are diagnosed with the condition, only one girl is. This is because girls with the condition generally hide it much better than boys. Girls also face fewer difficulties resulting from the condition, but this is more due to the general social interaction than anything to do with the condition itself. Asperger's is a condition that comes with some rather undesirable aspects. It isn't all bad, but for someone with Asperger's, life can be very lonely, and an Asperger's people with the condition are often cool and can feel like they don't fit in or belong. They can feel like they are alien to the world. Isolation This is one word that almost anyone with Asperger's is likely to relate to. When you have Asperger's, you can feel like you are all alone, even when there are people all around you. This is because you view the world in different terms to everyone else. They, the neurotypicals, have their rules regarding how the world works. You, on the other hand, do not fit into their rules. There is no place for you in the system that they have created and that they so willingly abide by. So you are left on the outside. Even when you are with others, you are not really with them. You just feel like a third wheel. Someone who is tagging along and not a true member of their group. This is something that a person with Asperger's has to deal with 24-7. This is something that I have to deal with. My name is Robert. I am 23 years old and I have Asperger's syndrome. I was diagnosed with Asperger's at the age of 14, which is apparently quite late for a diagnosis. It took even longer to get support to help me deal with my condition. And this wasn't helped by the fact that my condition isn't obviously recognised as being severe. After all, Asperger's isn't a physical disability, even though it does sometimes manifest itself physically through frustrations and anxiety. Nor is it a learning disability, with Asperger's often being extremely smart and doing well in education. No, Asperger's is a social disability first and foremost. Something that prevents those from having it from experiencing a normal social life, 
Making such things as making friends and forming long-lasting relationships is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. This is how my day begins. For a series of routine which play a crucial role in my day-to-day -day life. These routines, and others like them, help me to create order out of chaos. To create a system that allows me to deal with the trials and tribulations that life presents to oneself. I don't handle changes in my life very well, but at times I do wish that there were some very big changes. To some, my life might seem easy, as if I don't have a care in the world, but this couldn't be much further from the truth. You see, many of the things that most people take for granted in life are extremely difficult for me. Social interactions that make up much of the fabric of society are just routine and mundane, normal for most people, most people being the irritables, but for me and others like me, living such a life is only a dream and nothing more. This is my safe haven from the world, a place where I can truly be myself without fear of judgement from the outside world. My room is a perfect illustration of how I like to live my life, clean and clutter free, all perfectly organised and arranged, with all my most valuable possessions close by. This is how some people might be happy to live their life, but not me. I couldn't live in a room that wasn't neat and tidy. If everything is out of order, it becomes difficult, if not impossible, to find things when I need them, which just makes me anxious. Just knowing that something isn't in the right place is enough to drive me crazy. You could say that I share some characteristics with Monica from the TV show Friends. Whenever something was out of her place in her home, she would freak out, and I'm very much the same way. Obviously, neatness isn't a crazy exclusive to people with Asperger's, but people with a condition do tend to have a need to have an order to their life, and my room organisation is a good example of this. My room also shows off the particular interests that I pursue obsessively, just like anyone else with Asperger's. That interest is film, and while I have had many interests over the years, it is this one that will stay with me because it has something to offer me whatever mood I am in. My DVD collection reveals two things about me. The first is how important organisation is in my life. Every single DVD I have is arranged by category, as are many of my videos. So many of which I have that I need to keep them in boxes so I don't need to have enough shelf space. It isn't just my DVDs that are arranged through a system either. Such a thing as how DVDs are arranged would likely seem very trivial to many people, but in my case, if just one DVD is out of place, it can be extremely distracting for me, and I can't fight the compulsion to put it back where it belongs.
The second thing that my DVDs reveal about me is that I have a rather eclectic taste in films and TV shows. For example, my DVD collection contains both mature films like Kill Bill and children's TV shows like Hannah Montana, which is a good representation of how Asperger's affects me, and I think shows how in some ways I feel like an adult and I can appreciate films meant for older viewers, but at the same time I still enjoy things that are made for children. It's almost as if I am stuck in limbo somewhere between childhood and adulthood, wanting to grow up but also unable to let go of my inner child. In a way, this illustrates the manner in which I view the world. At times I view everything as though I'm still young, but at the same time I can often feel somewhat mature and act accordingly. Looking around my room, you can clearly see that I am very passionate about my interests and my desire to keep everything earthly organised in every facet. Another facet of my life that is on display in my room is illustrated by my university degree. I achieved a 2-1 in my BA degree and have since gone on to do an MA as well. I have become very interested in stories about other people who have Asperger's syndrome or autism, and to this end I have collected and met together many articles, both from newspapers and off the internet, about autistic individuals who have found success in their life. I even started an online blog so that I may share these stories with others. My room is the culmination of everything that I have achieved and everything that I love in my life thus far. If many people were to see the range of things that I collect, they would like me to consider me odd. And twenties, this is probably the prediction I might create. And others like me as well. However, despite being bullied or picked on in the past for being different, whether or not since I made news of my condition public, I really don't care much about what others think of me. Yes, my condition makes me different, but the only thing that really matters is what I think of myself, not what others think of me. Since I was a child, I have collected soft toy pigs, and I still do so today. This is one of my most childlike qualities. Many people might think me weird for doing such a thing at my age. But my collection offers me solace when I am stressed or depressed, and reminds me of happier, or should I say, less lonesome times from my childhood. My dad is the most important person in my life, the individual who I depend on the most, and who in many ways depends on me in return. Yet while I depend on him, and while I do love him, I often find myself unable to fully open up even to him. Part of the reason for this is that I am just so reserved, often keeping my emotions bottled up rather than outwardly expressing them. Another key reason is that as a person with Asperger's, I am unable to feel empathy, or in the conventional sense at least. I think it's something that affects my relationships and interactions with everyone around me. As close as I am to my dad, there is also a distance between me and him, a distance that is even greater with other people I know. One of the biggest problems that Asperger's poses for me is that it makes me extremely dependent on others for some of the most basic needs. Things that most people take for granted. For example, whenever I need to be somewhere, I need my dad to drive me, as I cannot drive myself. I have taken driving lessons in the past and intend to take them up again in the future, but it is a lot of pressure on me, and I tend to worry, even panic about the lessons. 